morning, my brothers and sisters all around this fragile blue planet. Welcome to Wolf Spirit Radio, and welcome to Jennifer Hillman and her guest, Naganji Leia. And Jennifer, it's time for Abstract Illusion Radio. Good day, everyone. I have a beautiful soul who has had quite the adventure. Um, originally from the Congo, he escaped the war after having death threats against his family, went up to Belgium and went to school and went to school for business, then went into the arts, and he truly has found um, a beautiful way of healing and helping humanity through his art, um, poetry, film, photography, uh, Nanji has the beautiful ability of taking a lot of different genres and really mixing them. He really shows the light and the dark and back to the light in his work. And it's really an honor to have him as a friend and have actually finally got to talk to him um, because we've known each other and we've sent email back and forth. But it's great to have you on. Thank you so much for being on air Thank you, Jennifer, for having me. And for those kind words of introduction, thank you very much. Um, you know, you've been through a lot. Can you go through a little bit about your childhood and what you grew up with? Uh, yes, I'll try to summarize it. So um, I was born in Bukavu, which is in the Great Lake region of um, uh, Africa. So it's in Congo, east of Congo. Um, I've lived there till 1996, where those uh, political events occurred that uh, forced my family to, to leave and, uh, and come here to Belgium, where I am right now. Um, so, actually, what would you like to know about all that? Um, well, how was the, the emotional impact of it? I mean, growing up in it, was it like, okay, here we go again, or was there really a feeling of not understanding what was going on because you were you were born in it. So for me, it's like a whole different world to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first thing um, I have to say is um, it's kind of a shock when uh, you imagine that you will grow up and live uh, all your life in one place and then uh, all of a sudden you have to to leave your motherland so um i, I like to say that's uh, the origin of my um passion for art because uh after the trauma of that um unexpected departure from my country uh i didn't have uh, anybody to talk to actually because i was arriving um in europe i didn't know a lot of people here, um, and I had to, to deal with uh, some questions like um, um, the unknown, basically, because I left everything I knew. So I didn't know how to answer to that, so I started writing. So that was the first time I, I, I started writing as a therapy, actually. And uh, it helped me um, to cope with the situation until the family found a... Uh, finally settled down in Belgium, and I went back to school, kind of have a normal uh, life. But uh, there were still all those questions I had about my identity, of course, because I was living in Africa to, to live in Europe. Um, and I started finding those answers through um, literature, because I read a lot, and I think that's also where my passion for writing comes from. And uh, so for me, this uh, art thing started as, a, yeah, really like a, a, a therapy, a little bit like an, um, a selfish therapy before I met other people that uh, were finding um, real self-expression through their, their own art. And uh, that's why I had the idea of a website you know, uh, L'Art d'être humain. Um, which I could translate as uh, the art of being human. That's the, the the poetry website, actually. So I don't know if you want me to, to go further, because I can talk all, all afternoon. <laughs> well, it, it, I mean, I, you've invited me to put some of my poetry on the site as well. And, I mean, the amazing part of 
all of it is, I mean, in Belgium, and there's such a diverse group of people who have left some other place and found almost like a synergy with new people. It's like there's a home base of refugees in a way in Belgium. Do you feel yeah. that way or, or, or not? Um, what do you mean by a home base of refugees? Well, a lot of people that I have met that live in Belgium through mm-hmm. Facebook, mm-hmm. they originally come from somewhere else, and they're leaving their homeland to start a new life because where they left was so worn, torn, miserable mm-hmm. that they and, – and it's like there's a, almost like a unity that it's like you all guys have found each other to help mm-hmm. you through. And you're all artists. You're all um, really trying to find a family outside your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and that true. support that support system. Yes, we found this support system. Of course, for me, it's like basically it's your family and friends first. Um, but then there's this other group that comes from uh, having. Uh, gone through the same trauma, and uh, maybe that's what you refer to when you talk about most of uh, the people you're maybe in contact with that come from, uh, let's say, some parts of Africa. And if yes. you're thinking about um, some refugees, usually uh, you have this historical connection between uh, Belgium and, let's say, Congo, uh, Burundi, and Rwanda. So, Usually we have uh, refugee or people leaving those countries. They go um, to the most familiar European uh, country, and that would be Belgium. So I'm from Congo, and I, it was easier for me to uh, to find family members in Belgium. And it's the same for some of my friends from uh, Burundi or from Rwanda. Uh, and so besides the, the family and the friends, of course, you, you find yourself talking to people that went through the same situation. That's why you start having this um, uh, common points uh, of people from the same uh, background. But I have to admit that I'm not a big fan of um, just sticking to people that I'm, um, let's say, uh, kind of look alike, whether it's for uh, art or... Uh, just where I'm from, I like to mix with different culture because I find it so much more, I mean, more interesting. Um, so, of course, I have my friends from the same uh, area I was born, uh, but I'm way more excited these days to meet, um, let's say, uh, surprising, surprising persons because that's where I found uh, exciting things and I can get richer in, uh, let's say, culturally and artistically some, some, somehow. Yeah, a diverse texture exactly. really can add to your, your art. And mm-hmm. it's and it really is an interplay. And they, um, I've always said, and that's what the whole idea of abstract illusion is, the fact that one art really can inspire another art artists and it just it, we all kind of bounce off of each other and work together to express the beauty and the grace and sometimes the ugliness of of reality of what society is put out there um and i really with your photography i start with your photography and then we're going to get into your incredible film um but even in your f- photography the, most of it is black and white most of yes. it plays with the light and the dark. You have mm-hmm. a great way of using the lighting to really focus on the center of your attention. But yet the darkness has its own character. Uh, yeah, thank you for the, um, the photography. I think we, we talked about it a, a little bit earlier. Is um, uh, the first thing I like to to work with the natural light, and I think I'm uh, a big fan of black and white pictures because somehow you can focus on the emotions. There's not too many distractions from the uh, from the picture. So I'm trying to put sometimes some colored pictures, but uh, uh, most of the time. I really love black and white uh, photography. And, of course, you mentioned the, the darkness. 
And uh, when we're going to talk about the, the films, um, I think I told you about my, um, my attraction to dramas because um, for me, I like to use them as wake-up uh, calls. And mm -hmm. uh, I think I will also to find situation in, um, in photographies where um, you can see the beauty of something, but at the same time kind of see the danger of some situation because it's, uh, that's how I see life, actually. There's always uh, hope in one eye and despair in the other, but somehow we manage to to go on our with our business or reach our goals, but you cannot separate uh, the light from the darkness. So that, that's what I think I'm trying to combine in my photography and uh, in my films as well. Um, have you? How many films have you done now? Two come to mind that really have. The one I saw. Three. <laughs> There's three that really stick in my mind. Um, Which one? Which ones? Oh God! Definitely confusion because that was your latest one. Yeah. Um. Then there was the silence one, which I'm sorry I can't remember the name of it, but the intensity of of the action and it's just the story was told through the acting and through the light and the dark and the the atmosphere ha was a character. Okay. Um, and I know there's another one, but I, it it pops in my mind, but yet I can't think of the name of it at this time. But tell me later on. So officially, <laughs> I have. Um, Let's say six short films because um, there are some films I've uh, directed that I'm not really proud of, so I made them disappear from the internet. <laughs> and uh, um, so the the latest one are all on my website. So I will say six, and I'm working on the the next short short film for the moment, actually. Um, can we talk about confusion right now? Because that's the latest one that I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, and how did confusion come about, and how would you summarize what this short film is about? Um, I think to summarize it, I'll say it's um, it's a short film. I like to to call it a, a reportage because I've seen so many uh, things and I've interviewed thanks to the uh, the basketball global vision. It's the um, the organization I went to Morocco with, uh, and thanks to them, we went uh, in Rabat, the capital of Morocco, and we interviewed uh, some local uh, people, some migrants, and uh, so the whole idea with my um, with that film was how can I talk about uh, integration and sport and how people that feel. Uh, uh, like strangers uh, or that feel that they are not accepted where they want to settle down, how they can finally mix with the local people. And usually you find that connection through a, a common passion. And in that case, that was basketball. So when they were on the playground, some will uh, for a short period forget that uh, originally they don't speak the same languages or they maybe don't share the same religion and uh, in some cases like you had uh, you could find women playing basketball with men uh, which is not that um, uh, obvious uh, but thanks to, to sport uh, it was happening so in those 12 minutes of the confusion film I was trying to raise uh, awareness on some uh, question, whether it was the gender, the, the race, or uh, we didn't have time to uh, dig into the religion um, question, but that's something I obviously keep in mind because it's a part of the inspiration of my next short film. But for Confusion, it was all about that. Like, if you've never been to... Uh, to Morocco, or you you don't you're not aware of um, that it's not that obvious for let's say black and white to mix together or men and women to mix together. I hope that by watching that short film, you can start 
thinking about it or digging into the, the question about how it goes uh, with the other countries because I don't really have that, uh, that situation here in Belgium. But some questions are familiar to the question you could ask in some part of uh, some other parts of Africa, like mm -hmm. uh, a boy play with, I mean, play basketball with a girl. Uh, is it uh, normal or not? So those are questions I was interested in. I thought it was just very because it really is a global situation that sports really levels the playing field, the the humanity. It's like they're there with a central goal of winning the game. So mm -hmm. they work together as a team. And I thought it was brought together very well enough that film that, you know, we're all human. We're all here for the same goal. So let's set aside our differences that are really new points anyway and really beat and work together. Yeah, Being man, it. woman, or whatever religion or ethnic group you're in, uh -huh, uh -huh. we're exactly. here together. We're all human. <laughs> exactly. That's that's the, the the whole point. Um, you know, and that's the name of uh, we talked about the website where we share our poetry. Uh, the main word is human. I like to think that um, okay, I I'm a human. First, I'm a human. I happen to be black because I was born in Congo from two African parents. Uh, I happen to be to have been raised um, in a house where there were Catholics, uh, and then you go on with your life. You meet people, and sometimes you either change religion or you change point of view. So for me, it's just like the basis is we all human, and then we add some layers, whether it's a religious view, whether it's a sexual preferences, whether it's all those things are for me like just. Uh, adding to uh, a common point, which is we are being human. So if you get that, or if it's if people can take that message out of um, the the film, that's great, and that's why I like to focus on okay, what makes us singular, and what is the connection with everything that is actually universal. Right now, you you mentioned the the website, the art mm -hmm. of human. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how did that come about? Why did oh. you decide to to start the the poetry site? <laughs> uh, to make a long story short, um, I was working in the bank before I uh, I really took uh, art seriously, and in that bank there were days and then weeks where I really felt like, oh, actually. We are like numbers, a little bit like in the Matrix, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I started, uh, like, uh, I was um, more and more frustrated that um, uh, the workplace, uh, at least the one I was, uh, I was at, in that workplace, it seems like we were not really allowed to be ourselves, uh, share whatever we like or whatever we dislike, and... Um, yeah, just be authentic. So uh, then I start thinking about uh, most of my uh, friends that are into any passion, whether it's, uh, it's artistic or not. And I realized that most of the time you see the real face or the real um, character when they are really into their passion. So for me, it was writing, photography, and acting. And I was like, I think that if I... Um, open a website, if I uh, create a website where uh, other people could share their poetry, whether it's with the real name or with a, uh, uh, another name, um, that will maybe make me feel uh, better and help other people maybe feel better to express themselves uh, truthfully uh, and, and find out that there are other people that want to join in, which is actually what is happening. This website... Uh, was uh, created in March 2009, and we have um, more than 170 authors and more than, I think, almost 2,000, maybe 2,000 poems. And uh, so the whole idea came from I need a space uh, where I can be myself, and I can be myself when I uh, truly express myself with my art and when I meet other people that uh, are honest with himself and honest with me. So it happens uh, in art uh, exchanges, but 
I'm glad to to see that it also happens in just normal situation. You meet genuine people and uh, we have this very honest conversation. So I was aiming at uh, this type of exchange that I didn't have at my uh, workplace that I quit actually in 2010. It, it is amazing, and it actually is helping me learn French because quite a few of the poems are in French. So it helps yeah. diversify my experience as well and understand a new culture. So, um, with, so what inspires you in the day to day? Is it just, just observing humanity? Yeah, yeah, basically that's the, that's a great summary because, um, uh, I like just to, to keep my mind open and my heart open, actually, to whatever is going on uh, day to day. So sometimes I see things that uh, touches me and, uh, let's say, that doesn't need to come out as an artistic expression. Uh, I'm just uh, learning more about people and learning more about myself. And sometimes I hear or I see things that inspire me, something that I will write or an idea of... Um, yeah, for a film or documentary project. And so it's, it's basically, uh, anything could inspire me. Anything could inspire me. And then the, the whole process is to write down or, uh, use that inspiration. And the second part of the process is to see if, um, it's worth sharing it or not. So that's the, the other part. <laughs> yeah. That's the other part that, that often, um, kind of holds me up is, is this worth sharing? But generally, I do my best to share it in some form because, yeah, you know, just, that's what self-expression is all about is the sharing part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and that's how you make connection anyway, so. Yes. Um, have you been surprised by the response of your work? I was. And, um, and I am still, uh, am surprised by, um, the response because usually, um, I mean, I used to work on my project once it was ready, whether it was a poem, whether it was a film, put it online and then, uh, let's say go back in my, uh, <laughs> in my, in my, in my room and work on the next project. And I didn't, uh, I had to learn to appreciate um, the response uh, and use it as an encouragement as well. So I'm, I'm always surprised when I hear uh, my friends or people that I meet telling me about what they like about the film or poem or, or and then we start exchanging and I cannot resist um, the, the habit of um, trying to motivate other people to do the same, whether it's it's art, uh, whether it's writing or whatever. I just uh, am so grateful about everything I'm, um, I'm learning uh, by meeting people that are truly expressing themselves. So I think I'm forcing or I'm, I'm talking a lot about uh, motivating others to also write or, or do whatever. If you like, uh, I don't know, f flowers, just go take care of the flowers, uh, whatever, because I don't like to... Um, to meet people and, and see, you know, this type of sadness you can see in people's eyes that are sometimes just related to the fact that they don't, they're not being themselves. And, um, so if I think I can, by sharing my experience, um, motivate them to do whatever they feel is their purpose in life, then, then I'm happy with that. So that comes also with taking time to, to enjoy the response to whatever I'm doing because that's how, again, I make connection with other people. And, uh, yeah, we move forward. Um, and it's it's very interesting on the website, at least the the page on Facebook, you, you mm -hmm. always get some kind of comments on your work, um, being photography or poetry. So, in a way, film is the combination of both. Yes, uh, it's the combination, and most of the time, I have to admit that I use film as um, a way of getting rid of some frustration. Uh, so, some I love street photography, and street photography uh, it's so precious because you have moments that you cannot repeat. 
And sometimes I get this frustration because I didn't take my camera out fast enough. And I use those frustration as um, an inspiration for, oh, you know, that moment I missed yesterday while I was trying to uh, have a, a nice street photography session. Maybe I will add it as a scene in, in one short film. So, um, yeah, so film. Films combine uh, writing, because you have to write your script first, anyway. Uh, okay. Photography. Uh, I, I love it when I watch uh, movies that touches me uh, emotionally. Uh, and it, it comes from the visual. It comes from the acting. It comes from the writing and all that. So there's a lot of arts combined to create one uh, thing called cinema that I really love. That I, yeah, I'm really fan of it. Um, with street photography, it really mm -hmm. just capture a moment mm -hmm. of history, of humanity, um, and it really has a story all to itself. I always like to look at a, a street photography, um, and at times I get inspired to write a little mm -hmm. like caption on it. And I find that a lot of people, um, I've actually had people who have commented like, this, the the photo is a story of itself. It doesn't need captions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, the most powerful photographies are the one that uh, the ones that don't need comments because, like you say, the 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 story is already in the in that one shot you've seen. Um, you know, two days ago I was going across the uh, the history of the. Pulitzer Prizes, uh, the Pulitzer Prize, and mm -hmm. uh, some of the the photographies you see there, they don't really need the comment. You you always you already have a strong um, emotion coming out of it. That uh, let's say the the comment is secondary. So um, I totally agree with that. The 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 best pictures are the one that uh, you just look at the picture and you take whatever emotion it, it speaks to you. Uh, that's that's actually what I think as photographers we are um, be, we are running behind those type of um, uh, photographies where you can just look at it and whatever the emotion is supposed to be you are feeling it. Yes. Um, so, what photographers inspire you? Whoa, that's a huge. <laughs> that's. Huge question because I could go on and on. So to, huh, how can I answer to that? Um, this is the one you, that's that's more you. Everything they've done, you just say, "Wow," you know, or I've, is you know, that's you, the kind of best answer because I know there's so many incredible photographers out there. Yeah, exactly. I hope I won't be unfair with some of my uh, uh, great. Photographers that I really love that might not pop into my mind right now, but the first thing I have to say is I always have a, a tremendous amount of respect for photojournalists because mm -hmm. uh, for me it's like if I had the guts, that's what I would be doing because uh, you are combining so many things to inform with one single shot and you have the risk out there. Uh, so this is like um, I'm really in admiration when I see uh, uh, photojournalism. And then when it comes to um, if I have to single out some uh, photographers, uh, I will start with Sebastião Salgado, a Brazilian photographer. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a friend who actually offered me his um, latest book uh, for my birthday, and it's just, uh, I think, one of the best presents I, I, I had <laughs> uh, because... Uh, um, the book is called Genesis. If uh, the listener could uh, check it out, it's Sebastião Salgado. It's Genesis. It's on the Tashin uh, edition. And uh, so what I love about um, Sebastião Salgado is that he combines what uh, for me is like um, kind of the purpose. The purpose I want to uh, follow as an artist is to use beauty, of course, because art is uh, all about beauty, and at the same time, uh, say something uh, about the world or to the people watching. So he always 
uh, combine the beauty of his shots with uh, a message. Okay, so Genesis, it's all about, um, come on guys, let's remember that this, uh, yeah, like Dev said, this little planet called Earth, <laughs> um, worth uh, preserving it. So he went on many parts of the world, took pictures uh, that, I mean, they are so beautiful and so pure and what I get from that book is just like, okay, we need to keep this uh, planet alive, be more human, and all those uh, uh, little existential questions that my friend will say when they want to uh, have fun with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's Sebastião Salgado. You have uh, Steve McCurry. Uh, I've been checking a lot of his uh, shots lately because I really love his work with the, the colors. Uh, then you have... Uh, well, if I had others, I'll, I'll tell you. But uh, those are the, the two latest photographers I was really checking. And like I said, I spend at least 30 minutes per day on the uh, on photojournalism website because that's like for me the <laughs> the dream photographer job for me. Like I said, if I had the gut, that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> but I don't have them. I'm still well, to I, I, camera and fiction. Uh, to me, um, any kind of self-expression has a risk and a challenge mm-hmm. um, and a vulnerability. And definitely the photos that you shared from the book of Genesis, it, the layers of of emotion that he captured really got to me. Um, so it's it definitely is a book to check out. His work is, from what I saw on the web when I was checking out, um, it really is phenomenal. It really does. There's a depth to his photography. Um, and um, I've connected with a few of the street photography groups on Facebook. And it's very interesting the the different styles of the different photographers that really can bring the flavor of the, the city that they're in. Mm-hmm. And... And that's what kind of it's like it captures the different flavors and textures, which is just intriguing to me. Um, you feel like you're there or you want to go there. You want to touch the wall that's behind the person handing the little child a mm-hmm. flower. You know, even a simple thing of generosity or kindness in a photography when you know there's so much pain going around that image Um it can be really uplifting and inspiring that so many people are able to find happiness in the darkest places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally uh, agree with you. And uh, while listening to what you're saying, I I keep in mind that the main thing for me in art is emotions, whether it's happy emotion or pain, like you just mentioned it. Uh, I love it when I, I rather see... Uh, let's say, an art form that I uh, uh, hate than an art form that doesn't inspire anything to me. So it's really like about emotion, strong emotion that I I love, uh, that painting or that movie, or I hate it, or I like it when it goes directly, to, it speaks to my emotion, whether they are good or bad. And uh, you get that with some uh, uh, photographies, you get that with some great films, uh, as well, uh, and you get out also from some people, <laughs> some persons. <Yeah. laughs> uh, but still, I like this um, when people are authentic. I read to speak to someone uh, that doesn't like me and and doesn't pretend he likes me. Uh, then to be in this, um, sometimes I feel like the society is turning more into let's all behave the same outside uh, and put the same mask. Uh, and this, like, it makes me tired of sometimes. So um, I don't know if the solution is to lock myself at home and write, but uh, I keep that in mind. Uh, um, when I meet people, I really like to meet people. And if we can talk about uh, the emotions they feel, then I'm really happy about those um of the exchange I can have with uh, other persons. So do you find in your people, because the economy is like so fluctuating these days, mm-hmm. um, do you find 
time more people are putting on that mask to pretend they're happy when inside they're just being totally torn apart? Outside of the workplace, um, it's kind of hard because my answer won't be scientific. Since I'm uh, spending a lot of time with um, uh, friends that, if, an, if I wish it would be different, but they still have the type of, um, let's say, we liked the same things. Uh, some are also artists, so uh, I tend to be around uh, people that are authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I was at my workplace, uh, like I said earlier, uh, that was the most frustrating thing. Is like uh, I was wearing a, a mask, my colleagues were wearing a mask, unless you you happen to have a bond outside of um, the workplace. But, uh, and I think with um, the, whether only the global economy, the, uh, the politics, like uh, the freedom of speech and all that, I would, I would say that in general, I think, yes, we are uh, wearing more and more masks outside than uh, we did before, I think. Yeah. I so do you think that people need art and expression to really kind of, even if they, as you say, use um, a pen name or another name for their art just to express it so they have it out in the open? I mean, to me, art is extremely healing. That That's yeah. as, like you, I, I went through a lot of things when I was a kid. So it was poetry. I was writing stories. I had an overactive imagination. My mom didn't know what to do with me because mm -hmm. I had a very active imagination. So do you feel that everybody should do some kind of art, some kind of creative endeavor? Yes, since art is my, is my new religion. So <laughs> since I'm preaching for my religion, I would say, yeah, everybody should. Uh, there's art everywhere, actually. And if you think about even the way people speak, you know, when uh, you think about a loved one and uh, everybody use the same expression, which is uh, he or she passed away. I mean, that's poetry there. You, I mean, if you don't want to be poetic, you say uh, he died, you know. Uh, so for me, it's like if already in the way we speak, we use a lot of uh, um, metaphorical phrases or poetry, I believe that. If uh, everybody takes one minute to, to think about what they really love, because it's amazing how many, uh, how many persons love movies, but then when you ask them, okay, so what did you think about the movie? They will go like, uh, yeah, but you know, I'm not a critic. And I'm like, you don't need to be a critic to tell me what you like about a movie or not. So there it comes to another problem, which is um, the, the expression of, your own opinion. So I don't know if it's the the, the society that um, is doing that to us, or it's just the way we are growing up in our family. But uh, everybody has something artistic that you like. I'm pretty sure of it. So I think whether they now want to um, take an art form and be um, productive with it, um, it should be. It's good. It's healing because I agree with you. It's something that is healing. Whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it with a group of friends or you put things online or not, I think once you're doing something you're very passionate about, uh, whether it's art or not, actually, once you're doing something you're very passionate about, and with passion I, I, I mean very honest about it because that's what I really love to, to see in my, my, uh, my, my artist uh, uh, friends or people I meet is when they are honest about what they're doing, whether it's artistic or not. So mainly take your passion, whatever it is, and do it to the fullest and, uh, yeah, with honesty. And I think doing that, uh, it already uh, helps you feel better whatever is the thing you, you, you need to do. So I strongly believe in that. Maybe some of my friends will call me a little bit uh, <laughs> crazy about that, but it helped me so much uh, because I think if I wasn't into writing and all the other art expressions for, um, 
I'm not sure I'll be the happy person I am right now. I'm really not sure about that. So it healed me, and apparently it heals you as well. Uh, it heals you too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, and and I've dabbled in a lot of the different art forms in poetry. I always go back to poetry. It's like center heart for me. Um, but me you too. mentioned it, and and it's just it captured that moment. You just throw it on paper, and it's out, it's released, it's honest, it's raw. And, you know, that's, I've had so many people say, well, I have to edit my work. And it's just like, you've just captured your vulnerability and your rawness. How can you edit it? I mean, I can see maybe like grammar or something, but overall, it's like you've just thrown yourself on a piece of paper, and, and that's it. Um, I used to, to think exactly the same as you, uh, but then, um, I realized that, uh, sometimes I need to, uh, do some editing to get my, um, story understood because I have to admit sometimes I get maybe lost in my, uh, uh, in the rawness of the inspiration and then I make my poem, uh, I make a friend read my poem, and uh, my friend sees something completely different. Sometimes it's good, but when it's something I really want to share, I'm concerned about being misunderstood. So I'm doing some editing for that. And it's the same, actually, for films. Because you, if you're editing your, your film, or if you wrote the story... Uh, you might think it's very clear for you, so it might be clear to everybody, but you sometimes need the editing to make sure that everybody gets what you're trying to, to give as a message, you know? Very true. So, yeah, so I'm doing very some true. editing. And those, like I said, um, I had a, a problem uh, before, which was I was doing some censorship before I even put the poem online because I was like, uh, this is too private or I don't want, uh, people to know that part of me since I, I, I write my poems and I, I sign it with my name. So they know somehow it's related to, to me. And then I found a friend told me, yeah, Genji, well, that's not the right way to do it. It's like, let the inspiration come and then write it down, and then you decide if you're going to share it or not. So now that's what I'm doing. So it can be a raw inspiration. I write it directly. Uh, it had the, it helps me go through that emotion, and then when I'll take the poem two or three days after, I can decide whether I'm going to share it or not. Mm-hmm. Because right, I definitely have shared things and said, oh, my God, what have I just done? <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, the impulsive side of me comes out. But at least you feel you feel better when you do that. I have I have the same thing as well, and I'm glad I have this um, the website where I have to share the, the pages with other authors because otherwise right. I will be. Um, maybe you've noticed on my Facebook sometimes I put a quote. And then five hours after I take it out because I'm like, uh-uh, that was too, that was too fast. <laughs> let it, let it mature a little bit, uh, in your, in your book or in your papers and then think again before you, you throw it to the public, you know? Well, you know, it's, it's definitely an, an interesting experience with, um, with poetry and, you know, that self, expression and self um doubts and mm -hmm. then self censorship um it's it's definitely makes you wonder how much to share and how much you want to keep private how um, much to share talking you you say i could ask you questions so i'm i'm jumping in right now so please how, do <laughs> how uh to which extent could you uh, share your um yeah, your emotion on paper and then online, actually. Um, I probably share it more than I probably should, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, and and for and I think it's because of my the way I was brought up. It was like, um, don't say anything, be quiet. So it's like I was really put in a place of not speaking, 
mm-hmm. and not saying how I felt. So I held my emotions in. And now it's like, I've got emotions. I have feelings. I've got something to express and I'm going to do it. So it's like I'm going from one extreme to the other. And I think now I'm going more to the center. So I, I do that self censorship myself, but in the sense, I'm still more to the extreme of giving myself permission to express myself in full emotion is getting somebody else who was trapped in the silence and unable to speak. Maybe it's giving them permission to speak mm-hmm. up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I've, I'm working more on that balance. Um, a lot of my, it's like the first book I published, um, which is Embracing Souls, Dance mm-hmm. of the Soul, Dancing with the Soul or something. I can't even remember the time of my book. I, it was a very raw moment for me, and I really threw out um, everything. Um, I was very selective in the poems that are put in the book, but a lot of people came back and says, it looks like you're searching for something and you didn't find it. And I go, yeah, it's called The Journey. <laughs> um, and but a lot of them were it's just pretty much the disappointment in expectations and now I don't have the strong expectations as I did before um, which is good and bad because I think it's limit my drive a little mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. but at the same time I don't have the disappointments as I've what, had in the past. What were your main expectations? Um, it's more expectations of other people, and mm-hmm. that's what I've pretty much let go of. Um, but it's also the expectations of me to fulfill what others wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, it was kind of a, a mixed bag for me. And it's like, I do know what makes me feel good. And if I'm in a bad place and I write a poem and I want to express it, I do. I've had a lot of people tell me my my poetry and what I've written is very sensual Mm -hmm. um, and very passionate. So I tend to release um, the emotions that are very deep Mm -hmm. in in some ways kind of private. But to me, um, that's the raw edge that sometimes people don't allow themselves to express that needs to be expressed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's an openness. Um, I'm, I'm definitely in the process of refining and reinventing myself in a way. And don't you think you, you do that? You kind of get to the point that it's like, okay, what other aspect do I want to build or mold or change? I'm getting exactly to that point, and uh, actually I keep having the same phrase coming in my mind is like okay now you need to go to dig deeper because mm-hmm. uh, mm, no matter how many poems I write there's still that room where I don't want to enter because I feel like okay if I go there with my art is like giving my DNA to everybody and everybody will know what I'm really made of and you always kind of scared you want to protect that last part of yourself but um, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, if I want to uh, progress as an artist, I need to go where it's not safe anymore. And that's like digging deeper. Um, so it's it's very um, curious how it works because uh, these days I've been uh, writing a lot, but I've been um frustrated a lot because I'm reading my poems and I'm like, I already uh, talked about it uh, previously. And actually, every time I'm frustrated, afterwards I realize it's because I'm stopping at that door. I don't want to open that, you know, the last door where I'm like totally lost and then I can really find a new layer to, to myself and get to know myself better. And if I do that, um, I think as a person, I'm improving, and at the same time, I'm improving as a, an artist, but everybody wants to be safe, so I think I'm staying a little bit safe on that on that side for the moment. Damn. All right, thank you. I read your introduction to your website, and I, I was really glad about it because um, uh, somehow that's what I was trying to tell in the introduction to my website, that it's all about 
speaking your own truth. So we may agree or not, but at least if people can come up and say what is their truth or their opinion about things, uh, we can have an open discussion about it. So I, I kind of get that from your um, uh, words on your website. Am I right? You're absolutely correct. You know, that's that was something that developed over a, a period of months when I had uh, another radio station called Wolf Group Radio. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't really what I wanted. And now we're making this website that I have now everything that it can be. Mm -hmm. But when I, was, I work 14 to 17 hours a day, usually right here on Wolf Spirit Radio, just producing and taking care of the, the, the mundane things that have mm -hmm. to be done. Okay. And what is the I story? Don't, I don't know what happened to Miss Jennifer. We lost her, obviously. <laughs> what is the what one is, thing you've learned in your life that you found to be most beneficial to you? Uh, the most beneficial to me uh, is first getting to know myself better because that's the start. Uh, to get to know the others better. So if I have to keep one thing, uh, really learn that is beneficial to me, that's, uh, taking the time to know myself better. Really. What about you? Well, you know, that's an interesting question because I have learned, I'm 72, by the way. All right. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, what I have found is, the more I know about myself, the less I know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm finding out that the only thing that can stop me from doing anything is me. Mm -hmm. And to be... <laughs> Hang on, i got to call Jennifer's phone. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Oh, the joys of doing live radio. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta find her. I'm here. I know you're here. Hang on a second, I gotta find her. She's right here. Okay. <laughs> oh, there she goes. And if any, anybody thinks that doing uh, live radio is easy. <laughs> hey, Jenny. Welcome back, time. Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I could hear you guys fine. Did you do it on purpose for my first interview on the radio in English? Of course. Oh, that thank you. you. <laughs> okay, that was the challenge. That was the surprise. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't understand because I changed nothing in my connection on my um, or the um, Skype just disappeared connecting to my computer. So. But enough of that. So um, I was listening to how Dave was asking you about things that you've learned and you really finding more about yourself. And we were discussing how um, the healing part and the depth of really going into the mystery and saying it's okay. So um, to go a little deeper. But I, I agree with you in the fact that people like that security and that certainty. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not always available when you're doing art. You got to have that edge of vulnerability to really grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to to tell you more about it, actually, that's what get me into acting. You know, because uh, while I, I like to trick myself into doing things, so I was like, okay, here is the trick: you're gonna um, lie to yourself about playing a character knowing that you have to create most of the character with your emotions and with your body so that was the trick and every time i was doing uh, a scene let's say a very demanding or emotional scene um to in order to get to the scene uh i was telling myself hey it's not me it's the character but after the experience i was so relieved of uh having those emotions that I wouldn't have uh, tackled other ways 
uh, if it wasn't for acting. After having those emotions coming out through a scene, I was feeling so light and 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 relieved. So um, this is the the way I, I tricked myself into opening some doors that I didn't want to open before. So I was like, okay, through acting, I'm doing it now. That's awesome. And we have just a couple more minutes. So do you want to say quickly about your new project in Congo that you're working on? All right. So there's three um, main projects. So there's one documentary about uh, the state of cinema in Congo that I will do while uh, being an actor on the, a short film we're going to shoot uh, about the Congolese, the 50s in the Belgium Congolese. So that's the second project. And the third project is the short film about racism that I'm going to direct and probably I'm going to act in it too. So those are the three main projects that will keep me busy till December of this year. So um, is there one that you're really more excited about, or is it um, them, all of them are, like, equal in their intensity to really push you? Um, they, they are – I'm excited for the three of them. Uh, one, because I'm just directing, and it's more like a document. I'm co-directing, actually. Oh, that wasn't fair. I'm co-directing with a friend called Giselle Habi. We co-directing the documentary. And then the other one, I'm just acting. So that's great to just be a part of that, uh, uh, you know, one of the tools from the, the director. Uh, and then the short film, it's for me, it's like the extension of the video I start shooting uh, in Morocco because that was more like a reportage or a documentary. But I like to take the freedom um, fiction films give you. And with that freedom, I'm going to create a character for a short film about uh, racism, so that's connected. Um, so I'm I'm equally excited for the three projects, you know. So they feel and, different. And what, yes. Go on. No, no, I was saying they feel different needs. So uh, I'm equally excited. So where is the best place to um, follow your work? Mainly Facebook, <laughs> because on Facebook you get the uh, the news kind of directly. For my uh, official website, I usually wait uh, till I'm really satisfied about the movie and I get nice, um, let's say, uh, response. Then I I think okay, it's worth sharing on my website. Or uh, my Tumblr. I have a Tumblr where uh, I usually post something. So it's either on Facebook to get really the latest news. It's on my Facebook or on my Tumblr. So it's uh, you, you. You can spell that, or you have that on your uh, your Facebook. I think the information. Or you want me to spell my website? Why don't you spell your website real quick? Okay, so the website is uh, my first name, which is Genji, so I will spell it. The website is www.n for November, G for golf, A for alpha, N for November, J for Jennifer, I for India, dot B-E. So uh, that's that's it, N. Uh, G E N uh, N G. That's the problem with French. French golf. You know the J for golf. You say G, but right. Let's, let's just start. It's, it's three times a W, and then November golf alpha November January India dot B E. I hope some will get it. Otherwise, I'm on Facebook. I, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. <laughs> Right. And it is time to say so well for now. It has been an honor and a pleasure to talk to you and have this conversation, even though I, I disappeared for a while. Um, it, it's yep. been a beautiful experience, and I hope you'll come on again. Yeah, thank you very much. It was an honor and a pleasure for me. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Dave.